It's enough to drive you completely mad. This week we had a report on yet another police force, Greater Manchester this time, actively covering up the gang rape of children. This has happened, as we know, across the country, various different areas, various different police forces doing the same thing. And the report told us what we already know, that the police dropped these investigations into rape gangs across the area because they didn't want to stir up racial tensions. It never seems to occur to them that raping children is what's actually stirring up racial tensions and that if they told the truth and there was justice, those racial tensions might actually reduce. But as it is, they are letting known child rapists go free to rape yet more children. It is. Do they have any idea how disgusted decent British people are when we hear this? And what makes the disgust even greater is that we know that it is still going on all over the country. There's been an apology from Greater Manchester Police. Why? Why don't you stop allowing it to happen and forget the apologies? This is simply disgraceful. And Andy Burnham, Labour's Andy Burnham, the Mayor of Manchester, pretending that he's he's at that, oh, I'm going to sort this out. I'm going to stop this. Give me a break. You are complicit in this. You and your disgusting party are complicit in this. In fact, you are enablers of this. It is the Labour Party and its ideology that has allowed this to continue. It is the Labour Party that shouted racist at everyone who tried to stop it. To shame, shame upon every single one of them and shame upon Andy Barnum trying to look tough on this issue. Wipe it out. Wipe it out. But Labour won't because it depends too much on the vote of the demographic group behind all of this, which we are still not telling the truth about. Even while the press complains and comments about cover-up, it is engaging itself in cover-up and slurring and slandering millions of decent people and an entire continent to do so. Because once again, in the wake of this scandal, here we go, the press keeps referring to these group, these rapist groups as Asian. Uh, in the UK, Asian means from the Indian subcontinent. So it means from India, Bangladesh, Pakistan. That's what we know of as Asian. So in labelling these rape gangs Asian, the press is smearing and slandering decent Hindus and Sikhs who have no involvement in this at all. To an international audience, it is smearing an entire diverse continent. There are no Japanese, Chinese or Thai men involved in these gangs. Stop calling them Asian. You're engaged in actual racism in order to protect a religion. But even people on our side of this are not labelling these gangs correctly. Even the fantastic Katie Hopkins, who referred to it as a Pakistani Muslim problem, hasn't quite got that right. Brendan O'Neill in Spiked said the same, Pakistani, not actually accurate. This isn't a Pakistani problem. There are not, to my knowledge, and my knowledge on this is quite extensive, I've spent many years uh, at the heart of this issue, there are not, to my knowledge, any Pakistani Christian men involved in these gangs. But the overwhelming majority of the rape gangs, particularly in the north of England, are of Pakistani background. But drive down a little bit south of Manchester and you arrive in Bristol. And Bristol has a rape gang problem as well. But Bristol's rape gangs are not Pakistani. They are Somali. Across Europe... Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Germany, rape gangs all over, uh, coming from Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Egypt, Morocco. What can these men have in common? It's not a cultural thing. It's not an ethnic thing. They come from a variety of cultures and ethnicities. They do have one 
combining feature though, one thing that unites them, and that is their religion. A religion which just happens to teach the inferiority of the Kuffar on page after page of its holy text, and especially the inferiority of females. The core Islamic texts tell men they can treat women, especially non-Muslim women, however they like. These men come from countries in which women are treated by law of land, not fringe extremists, by law of the land, informed by Islam, treated like utter trash. Those men then come to Europe and what do we expect to happen? They will take it out on European women. They will behave towards European women exactly as we, as people who know this religion and those cultures expect them to behave. This is a Muslim problem, not an Asian problem and not a Pakistani problem. If you are not yet fully aware of the true nature of the Labour Party, well, really, we're running out of excuses here. But in the week when this was revealed, in the week when we found out that yet again, white working class girls, I know not exclusively white, I know Sikh and Hindu girls are targeted too, but overwhelmingly white working class girls are allowed, the police are allowing gangs to rape these girls in the streets, in overwhelmingly in labour areas with labour councils and labour leaders and in the week we find yet again that this is going on this time in Manchester labour has said nothing but let me tell you what it has done it has signed up all of the leadership candidates in the current labour leadership election all of them have signed up to the Muslim Council of Britain's 10 demands what they want is Apart, according to the Muslim Council of Britain, Muslims are not treated special enough, despite the fact that they are above the law, despite the fact that this religion is linked, what a terrible coincidence, to FGM, child marriage, honour violence, forced marriage, uh, halal, dis great disgusting bloody practices, despite the fact that this religion is linked to all of this. Labour has chosen this week to announce that, or its leadership candidates, at least gleefully announced by the Muslim Council of Britain, have decided to sign up to shut down criticism and to treat Muslims as even more special than they already are. Let me tell you what the Muslim Council of Britain's demands actually are. They want to tackle racism and Islamophobia. They live on this stuff. This is point number one, racism and Islamophobia. Immediately telling you that if you have any criticism of all the horrors enshrined in Islamic texts, you will be a racist. They have been living off this for years and gormless lefties fall for it hook, line and sinker. And if they don't, they're too afraid to say so because if they say so, they'll be accused of racism. Two, religious liberty. Defend the rights of Muslims to express their faith, be that in religious clothing, food or reasonable accommodation of religious observance. Clothing and food, the burqa and halal. So you won't be able to criticise either of those. Engagement with Muslim communities is demand number three, as if we don't engage enough. Every time something goes wrong, every time a scandal linked to Islam is leaked or, or is uh, revealed, we have Muslims on television. I don't get asked on television to talk about the real religion driving the rape gangs, for example. Not in a million years, but you will have Muslims constantly. Any debate about halal? Exclusively Muslims. Debate about Sharia councils? Exclusively Muslims. They are engaged with all the time. And even on anniversaries of major terror attacks, Muslims were the ones on television talking about it. So I don't know what engagement they want. They want exclusive, <laughs> exclusive uh, 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 domain here. They want to be the go-to for everything in our society so that we can make sure they will basically act as the Sharia Compliance Unit of Great Britain. Safety at places of worship. Um, I, again, I don't know quite what they're requiring, but I do know that after the Manchester bombing, when children were blown to pieces, the priority of police in the following days was to protect the mosques. Yes, 
the mosques to provide reassurance. Effective health and elderly care services, uh, they simply want uh, greater appreciation for elderly Muslims. I, I don't have any evidence that elderly Muslims are treated any worse than, than elderly people generally. Uh, I doubt that they are, so I won't comment any further on that one. Here's one of interest. Refugees. Encourage the resettlement of refugees across the UK. What a surprise. Because we know what religion most refugees will be. And we know that the more Muslims there are in this society, the more power the Muslim Council of Britain will claim and get. Full economic, social and public participation in British life. Enhanced democracy. I love that part. Uh, by enabling increased participation of minorities and women in politics and public life. Give me a break. Women in these communities are buried under blankets. You do not want participation of women. What you want is a complete restructuring of society to, in, uh, to accommodate and enable every single unreasonable demand of Islam. Equality in education. Once again, it's the, the effrontery is quite literally staggering. Schools in this country are making girls, Muslim schools in this country are making girls sit at the back of the room, making girls eat their lunch after boys, uh, telling girls not to go to university and teaching from books that tell boys that they can beat their wives. Uh, and yeah, they're calling, bleating about equality in education. And finally, ethical foreign policy, where they must recognise the state of Palestine and confront human rights abuses against people. I'm sure they don't mean the human rights abuses committed by Hamas against their own people. I'm sure they don't mean the human rights abuses of the savages in Saudi Arabia and Iran who, Sharia driven, commit the most appalling atrocities against their own people. But this in a week when once again we know that Muslims are raping children all over this country and getting away with it because the police don't want to upset groups like the Muslim Council of Britain. This is what Labour has signed up to. Are you disgusted enough yet? I am so tired of this. The British public is so tired of this. We are tired of hearing the platitudes and the weak, pathetic apologies. Enough. This is still going on all over the country and that just compounds it so much more. I spoke to Jane Senior at an event in uh, in the House of Commons or the House of Lords a couple of years back and she told me very clearly that the situation in Rotherham today is worse than it was prior to the Jay report and that breaks her heart because people think that Rotherham, well we did something about Rotherham, it's worse than it ever was because nothing has changed. We are still finding excuses for this religion. We are still trying to deny the monsters that its teachings create. We are still betraying our own children and handing them over to child torturers and we are still pretending there isn't a problem with this religion. Islam is at the heart of this and until we call that out nothing will change. We must kick Labour out of power. Surely, surely this is the last insult they can throw at you. Labour is defined by its hatred of you and your children and its love of everything that threatens you and your children. Enough. Call out Islam. Stop these rape gangs, throw them out of this country or jail them for 20 years minimum. That is for Britain policy. And, and to, top, to, to top it off, we have got to stop the immigration from the countries that are bringing us these rape gangs. I've seen the questions been asked, how long has this been going on? I can tell you, it's been going on since the 1960s. It increased in the 70s, it increased in the 80s and the 90s and the noughties and now again it's increasing and it increases as the Muslim population grows. That is the truth and we have to face that truth. We owe it. We owe more than lame meaningless apologies from Greater Manchester Police. We owe it to every girl and woman raped by these monsters and still being raped by them today. It must stop. Throw out the rapists and throw out the Labour Party.